a great day for baseball, and we have what appears to be a stellar attraction with the first place Chicago White Sox leading by a game, meeting the Yankees in second place, trailing by that game. Here are the starting lineup for the Chicago White Sox. Louis Aparicio leading off, playing shortstop. Nelson Fox at second base. Minnie Minoso, left field. Roy Seavers, first base. Sherm Lawler, catching. Al Smith will be in right field. Gene Freeth, third base. Joe Hicks in center field. And Billy Pierce, pitching. Pierce has a record of 8-5 and five for the year. Has one decision with the Yankees, that a losing one. Lifetime, he has won 23 games against the Yankees while losing 34 times. The men in blue make their appearance. And with them comes Casey Stengel and moving out from the other dugout, a very happy senior, Al Lopez, the manager of the White Sox. The Yankee batting order, Bobby Richardson at second base leading off. Hector Lopez in left field. Roger Maris in right. Bill Scourin, first base. Mickey Mantle in center field. Elston Howard catching. Bill McDougal, third base. Cletus Boyer at shortstop. And Jim Coates pitching. Coates is 9-1 and one for the year. Two decisions over the White Sox. A 3-0 and lifetime record against them. And Coates is 15-2 over his short major league career. In the second game of the doubleheader, it's expected that Eli Gerber will pitch for New York and Herb Score, who is rounding into something approximating the form that he knew in his better years with Cleveland. He pitched a fine ball game his last time out, and manager Al Lopez really is hoping that he can give the White Sox pitching staff that shot in the arm that a sound curb score would give them. I mean, there are a lot of people here today, and they're still coming in the ballpark. Everywhere you see, or everywhere you look, the prevailing color is white, but there just aren't any vacant seats at all. This is far and away the biggest crowd, and I think eventually the bleachers are going to be jammed, too. And when you get those seats completely filled, I think your crowds can get up around 67,000 here. We might have over 60,000, and a lot of people are standing here today, too. into the batter's box as Jim Coates is set to deliver the first pitch of the ball game. Here's the windup and the first pitch of the ball game. Right in there for a call strike. Red Barber is handling the play-by-play. -play. Let's get him right now. A beautiful day here at Yankee Stadium. Pitch is Had to be a slider. I know the coach doesn't throw it very often. Could have been the change off this fastball. The uh, main stands are filled, and the uh, people are still streaming into the bleachers. The two-strike pitch. Curveball. Cut three. He picked up the outside corner beautifully, and Aparicio knew it and just turned and walked away. We have Nelson Fox. Uh, Fox went hitless yesterday. He is still looking for hit number 2,000. If he gets it, he'll be the 104th member of that rather exclusive club. Uh, Alvin Dark uh, became the 103rd member earlier this year. He only needed one hit when he opened the season. 
Fox, a uh, little left-hand hitter, takes the pitch on the outside for one. behind in the crouch. Chokes well up on the bat. And then steps out just as Coach is ready to go in the call time. Coach is right in the middle of his mold. And uh, Rungi is looking up in the sky at something. And I think there was a reason for Rungi to call time more than uh, Fox trying to get out on the pitch. Rungi back at the plate, Rice at first, Smith is at second, Pepperello at third. Boy, it's a blistering hot day and very clear. Pitch is over for the strike, one and one. One ball, one strike. With uh, left-handers going for Chicago, Kubek is taken out. McDougal goes in to get what extra right-hand batter into the Yankees. So it's McDougal at third, Boyer at short, Richardson at second, and Scowen at first base. The pitch is a change of pace, swung on, and it's a little pop fly going to short left field and drops in. Well, that's not much of a hit, but it's number 2,000. And let's see, Runge is calling for the ball. He's going to call for the ball, and he throws it to the Chicago dugout. It's a very thoughtful gesture, and that will go across to Nelson Fox. And he's being patted on the back by first base coach Don Gutteridge. And I know that uh, Bob Fischel, the uh, fellow who puts up the late bulletin, will have one up there on the scoreboard to inform the big crowd here today. But that is uh, another milestone by this great little uh, player who was the league's most valuable last year, Nelson Fox. I'd say when a fella gets 2,000 hits in the major leagues, he's entitled to get the baseball. So, a little uh, pop fly that went in, and if you said send the Nelson body, he'll say, yeah, but I can tell you about 500 line drives that went at somebody, too. So, we have the uh, first runner. Now, here's Minnie Minoso, who was just hot as a sheriff's pistol yesterday with four hits, drove in three runs in the Friday night game. Takes a curve for a call strike. Minoso is hitting at 325, the same figure that uh, his roommate Al Smith is hitting at. And there goes the bulletin up on the scoreboard, and you'll hear the roar from the crowd in a moment. Nellie Fox, they're printing it uh, letter by letter. Now, has, there's a throw to first. That's all it says right now, Nellie Fox now has, now, there is uh, 200, we need another zero. They can't get the 2,000 to work right. The uh, pitch is low. They printed it 2,001. They tried. It, it may be that they couldn't get that last zero to come up. I don't know. They tried to do it. Uh, I know as far as Nelson is concerned, well, they got the one out there. 2,000 major league hits. <laughs> There's the bulletin. That's quite a service. Now you hear the reaction of the crowd. A curveball swung on, hit foul. Outside first base, between the bag and the coacher, Don Gutteridge. All right, one ball, two strikes. I've had the opportunity to uh, uh, be around when quite a few fellows got 2,000 hits. Uh, only once did I have the opportunity to broadcast a man getting his 3,000 hit. And that was from Paul Wayne. I got his, and he got it in Boston. And uh, Larry Getz, uh, the umpire, uh, called for the ball and uh, preserved it for Paul. Uh, in modern times, uh, there's only one fella, uh, Musial. He got that out of Chicago last year. All right, one ball, two strikes. Coach on the mound, one out. They have no score. It's the start of a big rip throw and double header. Coach, tall, skinny, hungry-looking right-hander. Delivers a fastball hit down the short. Boy, up with it over to Richardson. One, the throw to first base. Two, double play. Boy, he dropped the ball at first. Cowan dropped the throw after Rice had uh, called the runner out. So, of course, the umpire, once the ball dropped, had to reverse the call and made it safe. So the throw was there. The out call was uh, signaled, and then the ball got away from Cowan. Well, well, well. I know that the moose probably uh, could dig a hole right now and step in it. And let's see, I think the ball must have hit him. Uh, wait a minute. 
It bounced off, uh, just to see, the, by the trainer just saw it, the ball bounced off of Gowan's hand and apparently hit him in the face. So the ball really went through his head. And they are looking at Scowin's um, uh, left cheekbone. Mr. Morris, the moose is walking around. He's shaking a little bit. He's the league's leading hitter. And uh, he, he doesn't want to come out in the first inning of a double header. So the throw was not dropped. As it looked for the moment, it uh, got through his hand and struck him on uh, high on the left cheekbone. And, of course, Mr. Scowin, to add... Uh, Insult to the injury, draws an error. And by the way, uh, Richardson gets a put out and an assist. In case you uh, fellas are really keeping a sharp pointed uh, score. So we have Minoso at first on the error. Stevens is at the plate, dangerous hitter. Swings and hits a ground ball sharply to third. McDougal up with it, goes the short way to Richardson for the fourth play on Minoso at second base. Five to four after scoring. Charge Stevens with a force out. And the score at the end of half an inning. The White Sox nothing. And the Yankees coming to bat. Bonjour, monsieur. You are Atlantic dealer, correct? Yes, sir. I'm an Atlantic dealer. May I help you? My machine has lost. How do you Americans say? Ah, the thing. Zing? Oui. No more thing. Oh, oh, zing. Well, it could be your carburetor. Ah, le carburateur. Uh, yeah, probably a little dirty. We can fix that with Atlantic Imperial gasoline. Ah, très bien, monsieur. And Imperial, it makes many kilometers, oui? Oui, I mean, sure. Lots of mileage. Atlantic Imperial actually cleans your carburetor as you drive. And a clean carburetor cuts gasoline waste. You'd like to try it? Oui, hopefully, c'est deux. Hopefully, c'est deux. Laissez passer! Laissez passer! Ah, such power, such pickup, such a clean carburateur. Vive la différence! Vive Atlantic Imperial! Bobby Richardson will lead it off as we um, move into the last of the first inning. There's a ball driven to left center field. Hicks coming over is under it, and he has. Uh, Richardson hits the ball well, but it's out. As uh, my associate, Mr. Rizzuto, would say, he got good wood on the ball. But Hicks got uh, good leather on the ball. Uh, a few folks who uh, didn't hear about the Friday night ball game, or maybe didn't hear yesterday, Landis, the star center fielder, Dole, trying to catch a line drive base hit Friday night. And... Um, does a call strike to Lopez, and as he told me before the game, when he dove for the ball, instead of uh, having his glove hand uh, come up in the proper hinge and out of the way, the fingers got caught on the ground and it bent his hand back, and so he's got what you might say a, a reverse sprain wrist, and uh, he simply cannot hold it back. Uh, he went up to hit yesterday, and Lopez had him uh, bunting all the way. He, he uh, hit a foul butt with two strikes. A curve is in for a call, second strike to Hector Lopez. Hitting 289. Curveball swung on. There's a high fly ball in the short right. Al Smith is coming, coming, and makes the catch. Smith does something that is very deceiving to the spectators. Um, he is an outfielder who believes that you just simply get to the fly ball at the last but second. And he times it. If he's got lots of time, he just trots. He will run no faster. And uh, he looked to be just, just loping in. And I think that uh, 60,000 people thought that ball was going to drop in, but yet he just got there. Now here's Roger Maris. Takes the slider, low outside, ball one. Maris hitting 313, leading the majors in home run with 31. Top man in RBI for the Yankees with 76. Maris up. We have no score. Two men out last in the first inning. Pierce is the call to deliver. The ground ball hits to Nelson Fox in second. He's up with it. There's the throw with the receiver to first and plenty of time. Maris is out. The Yankees go down in order. And at the end of the first inning, the totals are Chicago no runs, one hit and no errors. And that hit is uh, uh, newsworthy. It is hit number 2,000 for Nelly Fox, making him the 104th Major League player to uh, break into the club. 
For the Yankees, no runs, no hits, and one error. There is Sean Lawler, uh, the catcher, fine ball player, hitting 266. Right hand hitter, outfield shades him toward left. Jim Coates on the mound from New York gives him a big curve low outside. And it is ball one. Don Gutteridge is the first base coach for the White Sox. Tony Cuccinolo at third. Has the fastball in there for a strike. One and one. has not won a ball game uh, this month. His last win was on the 29th of June. 1-1 pitch. Change of pace. Swung on. There's a high fly ball into deep left center field. Mattel coming over under it. Waiting. He has it. A put out to the center fielder in left center. Now we have Al Smith. He is uh, playing with a uh, bruised uh, left heel. He said at the start of the ball game yesterday he didn't think he could make an inning. But he got down to the late stages. Uh, Rivera has uh, finished off uh, the first two games of the series because of Smith Keel. Coach delivers a call strike just above the knee of the fastball. Coach has been uh, the good luck uh, charm pitcher for the Yankees this year. Uh, the Yankees have scored 130 runs in the 15 games that Coach has started. <laughs> Whew, you can get rich and high that way, you know. Curve, low outside, ball one. Coach has beaten Chicago twice this year. He's got his first batter in the second inning. No score. Smith, tough man to get past. Hatfield shades him around toward left. Richardson is playing a very deep second base, step back on the grass. There's a fastball high inside upon the lettering to Chicago. Ball two, two and one. Coach setting the sign hung out by Elson Howard. using left handers today. Uh, this is uh, occasion Stengel to have Howard catch the first game. We'll see about the second game. And uh, restore McDougal to the infield and uh, take Kubek out. Coach ready. Lean right-hander. The curve swung on and hit high to left center field. Lopez is waiting for it. Mantle stands aside and the left fielder takes it. We've had two very high ones hit to the same sector. Now here's third baseman Gene Freeze. Uh, Freeze hitting 269. The White Sox is the only team in the major league uh, that has the um, surname, the last name of the ball players uh, lettered on the back of the uniform shirt. Pitch is low outside, ball one. Uh, the White Sox have done it for their road uniforms. They have not done it for their home suits. Uh, personally, I think it is excellent. Just takes away that question, who, who it is? You see that name, and of course, this being the world of television now, it, it is a, a marvelous thing for the television viewer. The one-off pitch, low inside, ball two. Two balls, no strike. We have two out. Nobody on, no score. I'm looking at these... Uh, Four fellas in blue serge suits down there. It's going to be a long, hot afternoon for them because they don't get to go back in every half inning. they got to stand out there on that baked infield. 
pitching to dirt to the white side, and Cooks is falling behind, 3 and 0 to freeze. Tried to put too much on a curveball. All right, 3 and 0. Two balls, no strikes. Has any runs? And the pitch is right over. Freeze just stepped back, trying to misdirect coach's aim. Two balls, one strike. Right over again. He's all business. The pitch is low inside a fastball that just missed. So he lost him, as they say. That's the first base on ball so far in the ball game. And now we have young Joe Hicks. Last year was at uh, Indianapolis. Left hand batter. That field is shaded around toward right. Runner refresh two down. There's a throw back over there. Nothing doing. Scow on returns. Another reason, because I am um, going to interview him on the television after the double header. <laughs> the 1-0 pitch to Hicks is a call strike. That was the fastball just above the base on the outside. This is a black eye that I can ask him uh, if he does have it. I can ask him. I know where it, where it came from. Uh, and I uh, know I'll have a safe answer. I went down in the White Sox dugout, ran into early wind for the Friday night game. as a curveball for ball two. And, um, you know, you have to be sort of careful talking with starting pitchers just before they're going to start. And wind was going to start Friday night. And he was sitting over there. And he was a morose-looking figure anyhow. And he was sitting over there all by himself. Of course, we've had a speaking acquaintance for many years. And uh, I said, is it all right to speak to the starting pitcher? Sort of smile. He said, sure. I said, I don't really talk very casually. But I noticed he had a beautiful china uh, uh, left eye. Ooh, that's a fastball high of all three. And I am getting a little mature now. I didn't ask him how he got it. A little later, I went off and asked his manager. He said, <laughs> uh, uh uh, baseball that Bob Boyd of Baltimore uh, hit back at him, uh, bounced through his hands and struck him in the eye. Oh, he had a beaut. If you fellas have ever seen early win in uniform without shaving when he's going to start and then see a black eye couple with it, you have seen a pitcher. Now the 3-1 pitch the runner goes and the pitch is called second strike to Thurston Howell. He is in time. They get him because Freeze started his slide too soon and never did quite get to second base. If he had uh, not started way out there, he'd have made it. Howard throws on the shortstop side of second, and Freeze uh, just picked up again. It's wide too soon, and he was out. Howard to the shortstop for you. Joe, so it is nothing across from the score at the end of an inning and a half. Chicago, nothing, and New York, nothing. 
Everyone knows what a hinge is, that familiar gadget on the doors in our home. Now, when a hinge begins to squeak, of course, that means the parts are rubbing together. So what do we do about it? Well, we just apply a few drops of oil to the joint, and presto, the squeak is all gone. Well, now, the same thing holds true for your car. When you hear squeaks, it's a good indication that vital chassis parts are rubbing together, causing wear and tear. And you should see your Atlantic dealer for a safety service lubrication. When he lubricates all of your car's important chassis and engine points, he's actually cushioning those parts for protection and smoother performance. And also important, as a part of every Atlantic safety service lubrication, he checks such vital equipment as your lights, cooling system, battery, and muffler. That's the safety service part of his job. So make it a point to see your Atlantic dealer soon for a safety service lubrication. Keep your car on the go. talk about a fellow who's been hitting that ball is Mr. Bill Scowron. He's up at the plate right now and he has moved into uh, league leadership at 3.30. He's hit safety in seven, takes a call strike now from left-handed Pierce. And uh, Mr. Scowron has collected 14 hits in his last 26 at-bats. That is a mark of 5.38 and includes five home runs and 11 RBIs. Scowron uh, takes inside. Ball one. The Moose has uh, had 11 hits in his last 16 at bat. That's a mark of 688. He's up there, a big strong right hand batter, and takes a curve into his knees. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. First to the last of the second inning, first to the double header, and no score. Philip Pierce. Very graceful, they always refer to him as the stylish left-hander. Delivers, and he just pushes low inside. Uh, that was a change of pace. It made him uh, change off of his fastball. Pierce takes a sign from Lawler. Pitch is swung on, Scarn hits a high drive into right center. Center fielder Hicks is under it and makes the catch and the move to go. Now we have Mickey Mantle. He's got a soft foot. He didn't start yesterday, but he's playing. is up there hitting at 268 and as you folks know he is a switch hitter and is of course against left-handed Pierce batting right-handed the defense is deep and shifted around toward left Mickey swings and over swings and fouls the ball right down on his left foot oh boy he fouled one Friday night on his right foot now he's hit his left foot He would tell you that the visiting players uh, are barking. You know, salute to a hot dog. All right, Pierce, uh, one strike on Mano. Pitches and gets the second strike. He threw him a slider on the outside. Just under the belt. Nothing in two. No balls, two strikes. Pierce has uh, pitched many times against the Yankees. He's won 173 games in this league. He's some fellow. It's a two-strike pitch. Low inside a curveball. One and two. I asked him yesterday um, in an interview of uh, all the games he's pitched against New York, uh, what's the one he remembers the most? He said it was last year in Chicago. He had the Yankees beaten one to nothing. And with two men uh, on and two out for New York in the ninth inning, Mano takes low inside ball two. And Mano came up, and Pierce said he hit one. Right down the line, he said it was a home run. But he said, it just curved foul at the last minute. Then he said, I got him out. But he said, I, I'll never forget that, uh, that sick feeling when he uh, hit that ball. All right, two balls, two strikes. Mickey swinging from the end, wearing a familiar seven. The pitch is low inside, almost at his shin. Made him move his feet. Three and two. 
Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on last in second inning. No score. Just working very carefully, you know, as he has to. Pitch is hung in there. That was a screwball. It went down. And so did Mantle. Now we've got two men out, and here is uh, big right-handed uh, hitting catcher, Elston Howard, batting at 270. Outfield is very deep. A couple steps foot left on him. A pitch is a uh, slider in there for a strike. I noticed that Aparicio has varied a great deal. He was uh, pretty well in the hole between third and short on Mantle. And now he has moved over to where he's a step closer to second base than in uh, the normal uh, straightaway position. One strike pitch. How it swings above a curveball. Strike two. Nothing in two. The infield by and large is straight away on, on Elson. And now the center fielder Hicks has uh, moved uh, almost straight away center field. So it's now a straight away defense. Not to get two strikes on Howard. Pitch is low outside. Ball one. Every time a player moves, there's a meaning. And Hicks, after Pierce got the two quick strikes on Howard, moved back to straight away, which meant that he knew how Pierce was going to pitch and Howard's not going to be apt to pull as much. There's a curveball into the dirt low. Two and two. Check. Uh, we'll get Papa to find out what the uh, official temperature is for you. I would guess it'd be in the 80s. But we have a very pleasant humidity. For the curve, turn around in there, strike three. Well, so Pierce finishes the inning, uh, fanning Howard, and puts the Yankees down, nothing across. And the score at the end of two innings, Chicago nothing, and New York nothing. A clean carburetor can increase your driving pleasure. Now Atlantic Imperial Gasoline actually cleans your carburetor as you drive. Copy them, or while we have the opportunity, we will pause for station identification. At 1460 on the radio dial, this is Quality Modern Radio in Albany, WOKO, serving you with the best of everything. I don't know if, if Pappy is kind enough to get the uh, temperature why he doesn't give it. What is it, Pappy? 81 degrees, humidity 45 percent. My friend, that's it, Jamaica. That may be the first time you ever heard a uh, radio engineer on a microphone. <laughs> well, we've got to get ready for the third inning. Uh, Hicks to lead it off, then Pierce, then Aparicio, the shot stop. And the Yankees come in to be the last third of their left by Google Boy of Coach. At the end of an inning and a half, first game, Boston 4, Cleveland 3. Inning and a half of a single, Detroit at Baltimore, no score. End of six innings, first game, Kansas City at Washington, no score. Picks the left-hand hitter, who was uh, left waiting at the altar when uh, Freeze began his slide prematurely in the second inning. Left-hand batter swings and hits it in the center for a base shot. Single through the middle, and we have the second Chicago hit. Nelson Fox in the first inning, many of you uh, just joined us, uh, dropped a single into left field, a fly ball, it fell, and that was number 2,000 for Nelly. The first game of the doubleheader in Milwaukee, Chicago, at the end of two innings, is scoreless. That is the rest of the baseball picture up on to now. We have no score here at the stadium. Our first baseman, Scourin, goes over and has a, a check with Coates, telling him where he's going to play. Steps off and uh, Coach Pompey throws over there. Uh, Coach doesn't like these uh, uh, runners at first base stepping off on him. He throws over there a lot. Here's Pierce, left hand hitter. Everybody's looking for the bunt, of course. Pierce sets the bunt and then takes the pitch. It's a fastball through there for a strike. Uh, Pierce is a um, uh, pretty deft man up there with that bat. He's 7 to 39, hitting at 180. Outfield is in close, very close. Pierce takes 
takes a high fastball, and he was set to bunt, and the count is now one and one. A very meaningful bulletin is up on the scoreboard here at the stadium, back of the right center field bleacher section. Yankees lead majors in homers with 120. It's just not a Yankee team that doesn't hit over 100 home runs a season. They've done it so many years, I think they uh, quit counting it. <laughs> All right, just uh, think of the uh, great players that are coming on here at the stadium. Here we are with Toretta's day to day. Pierce is busy looking at uh, Cuchinola, the third base coach. He just went down and talked to him a minute ago. So the first, nothing doing. Mike Dougal is so certain that Pierce is going to bunt that he's uh, about halfway in from third base. Scott, of course, has to stay at first, uh, hold the runner, and then he'll charge. Coach gets set to pitch. Look at Mike Dougal come in. He's over halfway now. And Pierce swings and hits a foul ball down the left field line. Of course, Pierce is, is, a, is a good fellow to, to switch with up there because he can swing that bat. And you know, in a bunch situation, when, a, when an infielder runs in and a fellow does swing, uh, a dentist someplace is liable to get quite a job. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, they're still looking for the bunt. And the pitch is high outside, and Pierce was not such a bunt. Ball two, uh, Howard had to reach up. You know, Elson is better than six feet. Howard is a very active form. You know, his uh, big sport before he got interested in baseball was basketball. And you can't play that unless you can really move around. All right, two balls, two strikes. Nobody out on it, first base, Hicks. Singled uh, on the ground through the middle. The 2-2 two -two runner goes, and the pitch is high outside. There's a throw down to second base, and he's out. He stood with his hand, and he's claiming to umpire Chris that he touched the bag before shot that boy at the coward's uh, throw and put it on him, but he's out. He went down on an attempt to steal. That was a run and hit play. In other words, had the uh, pitch been for a strike, Pierce, of course, would have been swinging. He had the option to take it for ball three, which he did. So Howard has thrown out two. So it is three two, nobody on one out, and Pierce swinging hits the foul out of play back to third. Three balls, two strikes. Then two. Two pitches swung on as a high foul into the third base seats again. Three balls, two strikes. Coach is taking his time. They got rid of the runner on the attempt to steal. 3-2 pitch is swung on. There's a five ball right out to where Hector Lopez is positioned in left field. He's under it. And he has it. The uh, White Sox are really steamed up. Uh, three of the fellows who are riding the bench, I uh, know Rivera was one. As soon as that ball started out for left field, they all jumped up to the top of the dugout where they could see it. Now we have Aparicio, who started out the ball game taking a third strike. Hitting 250. 
Boy, he can steal those bases. Swings and hits the bounding ball to third. It's foul. Went foul after the last moment. Nothing in one. Just a little bitty boy down there with those men. Crouches. Takes the curve low outside. Ball one. But he can play with the big fellas, though. No score. First of two. The ground ball is hit to deep short. Very up with it. Makes the throw and throws him out. Oh, doctor. in deep in the hole to that third and grabbed that ball and put on the brakes and threw uh, without a bit of help from his body just on the arm and he got it. That was quite a play and that ratio can get down that line to first base. Make no mark about that. Well that aroused the crowd. And the score now at the end of two and a half innings of the first game remains Chicago nothing and New York nothing. Well, Mr. Thompson, we found the trouble. Your carburetor is dirty. Look. You mean that little bit was enough to do it? That's right. Because of the close clearance on the carburetor, just a small amount of deposit can cause a throttle plate to feed the wrong mixture of air and gasoline. So your engine stalls a lot, idles rough, and wastes gasoline. But what causes that deposit? You know I take good care of my car. It's not your fault. You see exhaust fumes and other stuff in the air get by your air cleaner and build up in your carburetor. Well, isn't there any way I can prevent these deposits? There is now. Just start using Atlantic Imperial gasoline. Atlantic Imperial? Why? Well, it's because the Atlantic Imperial they make today will actually clean out your carburetor and keep it clean while you drive. You mean I won't have to spend money to have my carburetor cleaned again? No, sir. Atlantic Imperial gasoline is all you need to keep your carburetor clean. Try it. Okay, Bill, you sold me. My next tank full is Atlantic Imperial. Get uh, Phil Rizzuto over here. I want to ask him something. Uh, Phil, you played a few games at short uh, here at the stadium. Uh, how, how good was Boyer's play just now? Well, when the ball was hit and I was standing over the, to the side, I said, that's a base hit. I didn't see how anybody could throw him out. And Boyer went to his right and made the play and uh, threw off balance. It seemed before he had it. And I never thought he'd get Aparicio, but he got him. Well, of course, if Aparicio could run, he wouldn't have gotten him. Oh, oh, I mean, nobody can run faster than him except maybe Mattel. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shortstop. Now, we have uh, the McDougal up. Well, we got shortstops all around here. Boyer, Aparicio, Rizzuto, Pee Wee Reese over there on Colorado's game of the day. Pierce uh, throws a curve over first strike to McDougal. Yelp hitting 261, right hand batter. The square stands. Take strike two. Boom. Now it is one ball, two strikes. That was a change of pace that put it right over. The Red Sox, who scored four runs in the first inning in their first game right with Cleveland, just scored four runs against the Indians in the second. And then I'll lead them eight to three. Pitches one and two, a curve as a half swing and a foul ball that lands out in front of the first base stands and bounces in. A little uh, low line foul on a check swing. And one ball, two strikes. Frank Rossetti, coaching in third. Ralph Houck, the major they call him around here, what he came out of the uh, Army as. He's in the Rangers. One-two pitch. 
curveball high inside. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Cleveland comes in here for a big series of four games, Tuesday night, doubleheader Wednesday, and Thursday night. McDougal hits a high fly out into straightaway center. Hicks going back, going back, going back, and he makes the catch. He started to come in, and it almost cost him. He didn't realize that Gill had uh, put the wood to that ball, but he was able to go back and get it. Of course, by the fact he came in a step, uh, when you are a new outfielder and you are uh, uh, playing center field on a bright sunshiny day with a full ballpark such as we've got here now, there may be a few seats out in the bleachers, but the main grandstands are full. And when this ball goes up and out of all these uh, shakes and paces, uh, you can be pardoned a step in the wrong direction. And here's young boy who just made that play to throw it up for Ishio. Takes a pitch high outside, ball one. Boyer has been making all the plays to field, either in third or short, wherever case he uses him. He's hitting 237, but he's picked up in his hitting. He had a 13-game hitting streak until he ran into these uh, selfish men that Al Lopez has for pitchers. They stopped him Friday night. There's a curve from Pierce for a strike on the outside. One ball, two strikes. Billy delivers and takes a little bit off of his change high outside ball, too. Good one. Well, we got some baseball in uh, baseball's great ballpark coming up. 2-1 pitch is swung on and foul back. After the Cleveland series, which is uh, Tuesday night, two games Wednesday afternoon starting at 1.30. Uh, for those uh, of you who are not uh, aware of it, uh, Sunday doubleheaders have to start at 2 o'clock because of the New York State law that says no sporting event. It's not, it's not baseball game. No sporting event can start before 2. Oh, stuck out on a high slider. That's the third strike after Pierce. And I think it's pretty apparent right now that, uh, that Pierce brought all of his stuff with him today. After the Cleveland series, uh, Kansas City is in for Friday night, Saturday. And Saturday will be Casey Stengel's 75th birthday. So let's all be on hand to uh, give the skipper a salute. And then uh, Sunday, a week from today, will be two games with the athletic. Then Detroit comes in Monday night. Tuesday afternoon, then Tuesday night, and Wednesday afternoon. But uh, uh, afternoon and night situation is uh, because of a game rained out. Those are two separate games Tuesday. Two o'clock in the afternoon and eight o'clock at night. One on pitch. There's a curve swung on and miss. One and one. Uh, Coates is the hitter, and he is the um, leading hitter among the pitchers. You know what he's hitting? He's hitting 297. He's got 11 hits, and he takes his hitting very seriously. And he only had one hit last year. 1-1 one, one pitch, inside, ball two. Couldn't hit a lick last year, and he's leading the pitches this year. All right, two and one. Jim, the right-hand batter, takes strike two, though, the slider just above the knees on the outside. Uh, Pierce is really, as they say in the trade, manipulating the baseball. He is fingering it and releasing it very deftly. 2-2 two -two pitch, curves one run in there. <laughs> well, Pierce has knocked off the first nine. Not a perfect, he struck out four. And at the end of three innings, the total is Chicago, no runs, two hits and no errors. And for New York, no runs, no hits, and one error. Well, now, let's see. Let's call a shortstop over here. Because that could mean any one of two or three is jumping to the back of all. Hey, look, here's Rizzuto. <laughs> well, I tell you, Pee Wee uh, Reese, who was doing the game of the week for uh, the CBS television network, was remarking on that play that Boyer made. And Pee Wee's played a lot of shortstop himself for the Dodgers for a long, long time. And he said that's one of the finest plays he's ever seen. Matter of fact, before the game, Casey Stengel had been telling Pee Wee that he knew Boyer could go to his left, but that he wasn't sure he could go to his right. And after that play, Pee Wee said that should erase all doubts. But nobody can go to their right any better than that on a runner like Aparicio and throw him out. Quick look on the scoreboard. In the American League, the Red Sox eight and the Indians three at the end of two and a half. It's been Bell, Briggs, and Locke for Cleveland. Mon Bouquet for the Red Sox. Guy go home in the first with one on. 
They're playing a doubleheader up there. Detroit at Baltimore, single game, nothing, nothing at the end of two and a half. Bunning against Estrada. Kansas City scored six in the top of the seventh, lead Washington six nothing at the end of seven. Herbert Kralik relieved Clevenger in the seventh. The National League, Philadelphia at Los Angeles, Pittsburgh at San Francisco, State Slug. Later on, the Cardinals lead Cincinnati one nothing, playing the top of the second as Spencer homered. Brolio against Hook. Milwaukee leads the Cubs four nothing at the end of two and a half. Logan homered in the third with one on Spawn against Hobby. Here's Nelly Fox, who single a short left field, first time up, takes a strike. Fox came up with his 2,000th base hit of his major league career the first time at bat. I'm having as much trouble saying that as the scoreboard had putting it up. Jim Coates on the mound. Change up the front line to right field, another base hit. And he's starting on his second 2,000 right now. Nelly Fox lines a single to right field. He hit a low breaking pitch that time right over Richardson's head. And that's hit number three for Coates. And that's all the hits in the ball game. Here's Minnie Minoso who bounced into a force play in the first inning. Scarron holding first against Fox. Here's a stretch by Coates. There goes Fox, the curve is lined to left field, a base hit. Fox around second, and then holds on, a solid line drive, and even though Fox were running, it was hit so hard that Lopez had the ball on one hop even before Fox reached second base. So Minnie continues his hot hitting, and there are runners at first and second with nobody out here in the top of the fourth, no score in the ball game, and the batter is Roy Sievers, who hit into a fourth play in the first inning. Stevens looks down at Tony Cuccinello, coaching his third. Over at first is Don Gutteridge. Down is coming in at first. Here's a stretch by Coach. The pitch is low outside, ball one. On deck, Sherman Lalo. White Sox have been running their men today. They have had two of them thrown out. Freeze in the second inning and Hicks in the third inning. Here's the stretch by Coates. Pitch is fouled back on the screen. Strike one, one and one. Sievers went after a high inside fastball. Had a good ripple. But fouled the ball off near his fist. One and one the count. Jim Coates goes to the rods. And Vagnelli Fox whips out a big red handkerchief. One of those old bandanas. Frank Crosetti always had one in his back pocket. Still carries one there. One and one on Seavis. Big right hand hitter. Swings and fouls it back out of play in the upper deck. One ball, two strikes. Big crowd here today on a perfect day for baseball. Minoso leads off first, Fox off second. There's no score here in the top of the fourth. Nobody out. A one ball, two strike pitch. Curve low outside, ball two, two and two. That ball just missed. Hector Lopez deep in left field. The Yankee infield playing back in double play depth. He can play deep on Sievers and still get a double play. He doesn't go down the line too fast. Here's a stretch. Boyer cutting it back of Fox to throw. If it were low, they would have had him. Uh, nice time play as Boyer cutting back of Fox. As Coach wheeled and threw, he threw it a little high and Fox was able to get in under the tag. Two and two to count. Coach into the set position. The 2-2 pitch is line to left field, another base hit. 
Here comes Fox. The throw is in at third base, and the White Sox lead one to nothing. Three consecutive singles by Fox, Minoso, and Severs. And Severs gets his 54th run batted into the air. And the White Sox take a one to nothing lead. It brings up Sherm Lala, who fly to center field in the second inning. Once again, Scarlin playing in front of the runner at first. Looking for a possible sacrifice. Al Smith is on deck. Here's the stretch by Coach. The pitch is high ball one. Slaps at the ball with his glove when Howard throws it back. <laughs> Steve is at first, Minoso at second. Coach looks back at Minoso. His curve ball is over. Strike one, one and one. Taking his time, getting in the box. Coach into the stretch position. The pitch is taken outside as Lala has squared around above that ball. That time the White Sox were playing the sacrifice game. It's two and one now on Lala. Sham again looks down at Tony Cuccinello. Cooch giving the signs to Lala. McDougal's playing deep at third. Scowen is playing in at first. Going to be up to Coach to get over to third base if Lala should bunt that way. Here's the stretch to pitch. Here's bunted. Coach off the mound, up with it. Has to go to first base, and the throw is just in time to Richardson, who was a little bit late getting over there, but did get there in time. The sacrifice works. The runners advance. From the pitcher to the second baseman covering, Minoso slid in the third, and Seavers slid in the second. They were taking no chances on the possible fourth play at either base. And now with runners at second and third, and one out here is Al Smith, who fly to left field in the second inning. Nelson Howard is looking into the Yankee dugout at manager Casey Spangles, and they're going to put him on. They're going to give him an intentional pass to load him up so that they have a play at any base and a possible double play. Al Smith is being given four wide intentional bad pitches. There's ball two. That'll bring up Gene Freeze, who's swinging a couple of bats, loosening up in the on-deck circle. There's ball three. Boyer is holding Seavers at second, and uh, McDougal is holding Minoso close to third. There's ball four. The second walk given up by Coates, the first intentional pass of the ball game. And here's Gene Freeze, who walked in the second inning. They're thrown out attempting to steal. Smith at first, Seavers at second. Minoso at third. The infield back in double play depth. One run in. The White Sox leading one nothing here in the top of the fourth. First game of a big doubleheader. Another game to go. Jim Coates into the windup. The pitch to Freeze is a foul back on the screen. Strike one. the new baseball taking plenty of time on deck is Joe Hicks here's the wind up all three runners lead away the pitch is hit high in the air to center field not too deep Minoso is tagging Mantle's coming in he's got it 
Here comes Minoso. Here's the throw to the plate. And it's cut off by Scott and thrown a third in this game. Boy, that would have been a close play at the plate. It was a perfect throw by Mantle. But with the crowd yelling, I guess Scarin couldn't hear whether Howard was saying let it go or cut it off. Moose decided to cut the throw off. It would have been a strike on one hop to the plate, and Mantle was not too deep. It would have been a close play at the plate. Whether they'd have had him or not, we'll never know now. But Scarin's throw to third base was too late getting Sievers who had tagged up. So it goes as a sacrifice fly to center field. An RBI for Freeze, scoring Minoso. And uh, both Al Smith, who was at first, tagged up, went to second. And Sievers, who was at second, tagged up and went to third on a throw-in. Tony Cuccinello is going out to talk with Al Smith. Smith was taken out of the game uh, yesterday in the late innings. Smitty has had trouble with his leg most of the year. Joe Hicks, who singled in the third inning, then was caught trying to steal. Here's the batter. They're going to walk Hicks intentionally to load him up and pitch to Billy Pitt. There's ball two. Ball three. And they'll be loaded again for Billy Pierce. And there's the insect, second intentional walk given up by Jim Coates. Duke Moss is up now in the Yankee bullpen. The bases are loaded with two out and Billy Pierce the batter. Billy flying to left field in the third inning. 2-0, the White Sox lead. Jim Coates into the windup. Pitch to Pierce is a swing and a miss strike one at an overhand curveball. Louis Aparicio on deck. Coach into the windup. Fastball is low. Ball one, one, and one. One ball, one strike, and two out. Fastball is lying to right center field, a base hit. One run in, two runs in, and the White Sox lead four to nothing. The ball got away from Richardson, but not far enough to have Hicks advance or Pierce. So Billy Pierce lines a single to right center field with two outs. After they walk, the bases loaded to pitch to Billy. And the White Sox now lead. Four to nothing. With Joe Hicks at third, Pierce at first, and Louis Aparicio the batter. That's six hits for Jim Coates. And Casey Stengel wants Howard to go out to the mound to talk with Coates. There's action in the Yankee bullpen. Mauricio was called out on strikes in the first inning and was bounced out short to first in the third. Boyer making a beautiful play to throw him out. Louis, the ninth man of bat here in the top of the fourth. Here's a stretch. Pitch is low ball one. Billy Pierce has his warm-up jacket on. And third, Joe Hicks. White Sox are a red hot ball club right now. They've won seven in a row. Pitch is low outside, ball two, two and nothing. The 
Chicago has won 21 of their last 29 ball games. Two balls, no strike on Aparicio. Two out, two on. Four nothing. The Sox lead the Yankees here in the top of the fourth. Stretch by Coates. The pitch is a curve, low outside, bounces off Howard Shingard, but not too far. Hicks comes down a few steps and hustles back, ball three, three and nothing. <laughs> Tyron holding first against Pierce. Here's the stretch. Aparicio taken all the way. It's over the outside corner. Strike one call. Coach sets once again. 3-1 pitch is pop foul out of play in the upper deck. Full count on Aparicio. Pierce will be off with the pitch. Three and two and two out. Second base is open. Hicks is at third. Ready for the payoff pitch. There goes Pierce. The pitch is a curve foul just below us. Count holds at three and two. Aprecio goes back for the rosin bag. <laughs> Ready for the 3-2 delivery again. Pitch is high ball for He walked him and the bases are loaded again. Aparicio at first, Pierce at second, Hicks at third, and here's Nelly Fox who is two for two. Single in the first inning to get his 2,000th base hit of his major league career. Single in the fourth. This is his second time up in this inning. He started off the inning with a base hit to right, came around to score. 4 0 the White Sox lead, top of the fourth, two out, and the base is loaded. Here's the windup. The pitch is over, strike one call. Coach swings into the windup. Ball fouled on the first base line. It hit right off Fox's right foot. Oh, he went down on both knees, and that hurt. Nelly is hobbling around down there to the right of home plate. He went after a low inside curveball and fouled it right down off his right foot. Nothing in two on Foxy. In the second game, it's going to be Eli Gerber for the Yankees and Herb Score. Big left-hander for the White Sox. Two out, bases loaded, nothing in two on Nelly Fox. The wind-up. Pitch almost hits Fox, ball one. Aparicio at first, Pierce at second, and Hicks at third. The windup. Curve is pop foul, coming back near the screen. Howard chasing it, and he can't quite get it. It hits against the bottom of the screen. And Ellie had to slow up before he got to that screen. He had to run into it full force. One ball, two strikes. 
Fox picks up Howard's hat and his mask. Ed Rungi calling balls and strikes ran all the way back to the screen with Howard. One ball, two strikes on Nelly Fox. Coach ready to wind up. The curve is swung at and missed strike three. He foul tipped it, but Howard held onto it. So for the White Sox, as they send ten men to bat in the top of the fourth, they score four runs on four base hits. No Yankee errors and three men left on base to score at the end of three and a half innings. The White Sox four and the Yankees nothing. You know, just about all of us are familiar with Atlantic's outdoor billboards. Beautiful color photographs of mountains, farms, lakes, and many other and different appealing scenes. And you're familiar with the words, too. Atlantic keeps your car on the go. When you connect the words and pictures, you get the idea of just what Atlantic means. Quality products to meet your driving needs. Today's Atlantic Imperial Gasoline, for example, now cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. With Atlantic Imperial, you can enjoy smooth engine performance, greater gasoline economy. Use Atlantic Imperial Gasoline to keep your car on the go. WOKO, Albany. Yankees in the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Bobby Richardson. Before we start the bottom of the fourth, though, let's pause for station identification. 1460 on the radio dial. This is Quality Modern WOKO. 317. Stepping into the batter's box, and we had a little excitement over there in the television booth. The camera fell down one of the big TV cameras, and they are expensive. That's over where Pee Wee Reese is during the game of the week for CBS. Pee Wee wasn't hurt. Nobody hurt, actually, except the camera. All right, here's the pitch to Richardson. He takes it, strike one call. Bobby lined out to center field in the first inning. White Sox lead 4 nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. The left-handers pitch is a curve hit high in the air to left field. Minoso moving to his right. Moving back under it and makes the catch just about two feet in front of the left field fence in fair territory. That ball almost carried into the seats. It fooled Minnie for a while. He started in, then had to cut back and sharp to his right. Long fly ball by Bobby Richardson. Pierce has retired the first 10 Yankees that he's faced. Four of them by the strikeout route. Here's Hector Lopez who fly to right field in the first inning. No Yankee has reached first base as yet. Pitch to Lopez is a curve low, ball one. Ball is low, ball two, two and nothing. On deck is Roger Maris. Two nothing pitch is right in there. Strike one call. Two him on the count. This 2-1 delivery is fouled back on the screen out of play. 2-2. Two and two. Here's the 2-2 two 
two-two pitch. A foul back in the upper deck out of play. on Lopez, one out, nobody on. Pitch, strike three, call. He hit the inside corner, but Hector says no, no, it was inside. That's strikeout number five. Hector standing there with his hands on his hips. He does not want to leave, but he's going to have to. Now Hector puts the bat on his shoulder and walks away. Two away, here's Roger Maris, who bounced the second in the first inning. Maris is taken outside ball one. Roger ran up as though to bunt that ball. On deck, Bill Scarron. One nothing pitch is fouled back on the screen. Strike one, one on one. one delivery. The ground fouled on the first baseline. One ball, two strikes. Two out, nobody on. Four nothing. Chicago leads the Yankees. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the wind-up by Pierce. His pitch is inside. Ball two, two, and two. Deep in right center field. Now Smith deep in right. Here's the 2-2 pitch. A tie ball three. Maris started off of for it and stopped. Full count now on uh, Roger Maris. now for the payoff pitch. Here it is. It's strike three swinging. Billy Pierce chalks up his sixth strike out of the ball game. And the Yankees go down one, two, three for the fourth inning in a row as Pierce has required 12 men in a row. First 12 men that he's faced. The score at the end of four full innings, the White Sox four and the Yankees nothing. Minnie Minoso has certainly been a thorn in the Yankees' side, and this series is one for two. Swings and fouls the pitch in the upper deck. Minoso is now batting 326 on the air. The Moose is at 329, leading the American League. Minnie bounced to short his first time at bat. Single to left and scored in the fourth. One one pitch, low curve, bunted. Close up with it, flips underhand to Scarin in time. And Minoso picked a good pitch to try and push past the mound to change up curve, but he didn't bunt it hard enough. Coach got over there, flipped underhand to Scarin for the out, one away. Roy Sievers, who bounced the third, single to left to drive in a run, then came around to score as the batter. 
four nothing the White Sox lead. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Pitch almost hits Seavers ball one. Boy, Roy just did get back in time. A high inside fastball. Next, Sherman Lotto. Fastball hit deep to left field. Way, way back there. And it's a home run for Roy Stevens. Man, did he hit that one. Just to the left of the White Sox bullpen over 402 feet. For Stevens, his 16th double rather homer of the year. And RBI number 55 is second of the day, and the White Sox lead five to nothing. Now there are certain fellas you can brush back and get away with it, and there are certain fellas who you brush back and get a little mad. And Roy Sievers happens to be one of those fellas. And uh, that's the 15th home run of the year hit off Jim Coates. Tops for any Yankee pitcher. Here's Sherman Lawler. Lawler fly to center and sacrifice. He's 0 for 1. So, Seaver's big bat has been a, a great help to the White Sox in their recent surge to the top. He had himself a 21-game hitting streak just before coming here. There's a base hit to left field. Lawler hits an outside curve to left field. That's hit number 8 off Coates. Brings up Al Smith, who fly to left and walk. Smitty scored in the fourth inning. Here's a curve low, ball one. Lawler is at first with one away. Skyron holding him close. Here's the stretch by Coates. Pitch, the changeup hit high in the air to left center field. Lopez digging back, flips the glasses down, moving under it, and makes the catch. Ball was hit well, but a little too high. That's two away. Here's Gene Freeze, who walked and hit a sacrifice slider to drive in a run in the fourth. Has not been up officially today. Two out, one run in, White Sox five, Yankees nothing, top of the fifth. Pitch to Freeze, just swung it and missed strike one. It was a curveball, and Freeze tried to pop it to right field. You see him shift his feet, go out that way. Coach sets, looks at Lala leading off first. Sidearm fastball, line of left center field. Mantle digging, and it's Bryan rolling to the wall. Lala's going to score. Here's Freeze around second, digging for third. The relay coming in, and they hold him up on a long triple to deep left center field. Freeze lost his hat halfway between first and second, and here comes Casey Stengel. Gets his fifth triple of the year. A line drive between left and center that rolled all the way to the 457-foot sign. Lala scored easily, and Tony Cuccinello thought for a while that he might send a freeze in, but then on the strong relay from Mantle to Boyer to Howard, he held him up. Freeze is second run batted into the day. Stevens is driven in two. Freeze is driven in two, and Billy Pierce is driven in two. The White Sox lead 6-0, and Jim Coates is being taken out of the game. Coates has pitched four and two-third innings, which he's allowed nine base hits, has walked four, two of them intentionally, struck out one, and has allowed six runs. Should Freeze score from third, that'll be charged to Jim Coates. Duke Moss is coming in. 
168 pounds from Utica, Michigan, is coming on making his 18th appearance of the year. Duke has won one and lost one, and he relieved against Chicago on Friday night. Pitched three innings, gave up three base hits and one run. The latest to accept an invitation to the Yankees' annual Old Timers Day on Saturday, August 13th, is the one and only Jolt and Joe DiMaggio. Joe played for the American League All-Stars in 1939. They defeated the National League 3-1. to one. So uh, the Jolter joins fellow Ralph Ruffing, Murphy, Hartnett, Goodman, Herman, and Lombardi in accepting invitations to Old Timers Day. Duke Moss will be pitching to Joe Hicks, who singled in the third inning, then was thrown out attempting to steal and who was walked intentionally in the fourth inning. Duke looks over at Freeze, leading off third. Slow curve hit right back to Moss on one hop. Throw to first in time for the out. For the White Sox in the top of the fifth, two runs on three base hits. No Yankee errors. One man left to score at the end of four and a half innings. The White Sox, six, and the Yankees, nothing. inning it's going to be Bill Scar and Mickey Mantle and Elston Howard to face Billy Pierce the Moose fly out to center field in the uh, second inning Pierce has faced 12 Yankees and retired all 12 of them six on strikeouts Pierce starts his wind up then stops starts all over again the first pitch to Scar, and there's a ground ball up the middle, a base hit, the first hit of the ball game. That's the first hit off Billy Pierce, the single up the middle. Brings up Mickey Mantle, who struck out swinging in the second inning. If you remember back on June 1st, he was down at 265. He's now up to uh, 330. Pitch to Mickey inside ball one. He has been hitting at close to a 400 clip since June the 1st. 6 nothing. the White Sox lead. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. The stretch. Curve high. Ball 2-2-0. Two, two rubs up the ball. On deck is Elston Howard. Here's the 2 nothing pitch. Hit deep to left field. But curving ball, oh, man, way back in that upper deck. Mantle hit a high fastball about eye high. It went over the top of the foul pole that has a screen on it. And about 30 rows back in the upper deck in deep left field, but it curved foul. Oh, did he hit that one? Woo! Man, what a shot. For a minute, it looked like it was going to go right out of Yankee Stadium. That's how high it was hit. Here's a 2 1 pitch. A big hit to left field. That's going to bounce off the wall. And they'll go up with it. And Mantle's on with a double. After hitting that long high foul, Mantle rifled a double off the left field wall. Scourin moves into third. And 
and for Mantle, that's his 10th double of the year. Here's Elston Howard, who struck out in the second inning. Two on, nobody out. The Yankees threatening here in the bottom of the fifth. Infield playing back. White Sox lead, 6 nothing. The pitch to Howard. A foul down the right field line. Out of play, strike one. Pierce into the windup. Pitch low, ball one, one and one. Now up to 331. Leading the American League in hitting. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Ground ball up the middle. They put the center field. Darwin scores. Here comes Mantle. And it's a 6-2 ball game. And here comes Al Lopez out of the White Sox dugout. had pitched a perfect game had retired 12 men in a row coming into the bottom of the fifth inning then Scourin single, Mantle double Howard single to drive in both Scourin and Mantle and Al Lopez is out on the mound talking with Billy Pierce for Howard RBI's number 31 and 32 Mantle scores his 78th run of the year Leads the league in that, rather leads the Yankees in that department. And with Howard at first, McDougal is the batter. Lopez is going to leave Pierce in there. 6-2 ball game, the White Sox lead. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Gill slide out to deep center field in the third inning. Pitch to McDougal is outside, ball one. Cletus Boyer on deck. Beavers playing deep at first. Howard got a pretty good size lead. The stretch and the pitch is over. Strike one, one and one. Fans thought that pitch was a little low. So did Gil McDougal, as a matter of fact. There's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Curve inside, ball two, two and one. Ready for the 2-1 delivery to Gill. Here it is. It's a ground ball, a short. Aparicio to Fox for one. Back to first. Double play. So the big double play gets Pierce out of a jam. Two away. Here's Cletus Boyle, who struck out his first time at bat in the third inning. 6-2, the White Sox lead here in the bottom of the fifth. The Boyer is on the outside corner. Strike one call. One strike pitches. Line fake. It hit the foul line. Kicking off the left field fence. Boyer going to second. The throw to second. And he's in with a double. That was a vicious line drive that Gene Freeze go for. And it hit right on the foul line. You could see the, the uh, white part of the foul line kick up as the ball hit it. It kicked off the fence into short left field. And Boyer is in with a double. Bob Serve is coming out to bat for Duke Moss. Back 
That was the fourth hit off Billy Pierce. For Boyer, his tenth double of the year. Serve batting 237. Here comes Al Lopez, and Pierce is out of the game. Wait a minute now. He started out, and it's coming back. And the reason he's coming back is that they have not announced Serve's name as yet. Should Lopez go out there, Pierce would be automatically out of the game, and if they put a right-hand pitcher in, then Casey Stengel might change his mind and put a left-hand pinch hitter in. So Lopez walked back to the dugout, and Serve walked back to the Yankee dugout as Casey called him back. We'll wait and see who makes the first move. Serve had not been announced. Lopez is standing on the steps of the Yankee dugout. And Joe DeMastri, it looks like, is coming out now. Joe DeMastri is coming out. So let's see if Lopez is going to come out and get Pierce out of there. With Boyer at second and two out. Serve walks back in the Yankee dugout. Joe DeMastri is coming up to the batter's box. So it is DeMastri. Oh, it looks like Casey Stengel wants Billy Pierce to remain in the game. Had he put serve up, Lopez would have taken Pierce out. Here's the pitch to Joe. It's a strike call. This way, by putting Demetri up there, Lopez leaves Pierce in the ball game. Lopez pulls in uh, Minnie Minoso on left field, doesn't to play a little shallow. The pitch to uh, Demetri hits the second, Fox up with it. Over to Stevens for the out. So Billy Pierce not only gets a reprieve to stay in the ball game, but now has a chance to be the winning pitcher. Had he been taken out with two outs in the bottom of the fifth, he could not have been. Uh, the winning pitcher even had the White Sox won the game. For the Yankees in the bottom of the fifth, two runs on four base hits, no White Sox errors. One man left to score at the end of five full innings. The White Sox six runs, nine hits and no errors, and the Yankees two runs on four hits and one error. Well, that was quite a bit of the strategy there by both managers. Quite a break for... Uh, Billy Pierce, by the way, as we just explained to you. Al Lopez is not going very far with his pitches. He didn't go far with Shaw yesterday once he got in trouble. Even though Shaw pitched eight innings, he got in a little bit of trouble and he was yanked. Looks like Johnny James coming in from the Yankee boat. Johnny James is coming on. Third Yankee pitcher of the day. James, 5'10", 160 pounds, from Pacific Palisades, California, is making his 28th appearance of the year. He's won five and lost one. Relieved against Chicago Friday night, pitched two innings, gave up three hits, walked two, struck out one, allowed three runs. And Johnny James comes on with a 4.73 earned run average. And he'll be pitching to Billy Pierce, Louis Aparicio, and Nelly Fox as we get ready to go on the top of the sixth inning. The White Sox scored four runs in the fourth, two in the fifth. The Yankees scored two in the bottom of the fifth. And that's the way it stands. Six for Chicago, two for New York. And Billy Pierce, who is as close to being taken out of a ball game as you possibly can be without actually being taken out, will lead off. Pierce has helped his own cause with a single in the fourth inning with the bases loaded, driving in two runs. He flied to left his first time at bat. Billy's one for two. Now has seven runs batted in on the year. James pitched to Pierce is over. Strike one call. McDougal in a third. Curve swung it and missed strike two. Nothing into the count. The two-strike pitch. 
a base hit to right center field on a nothing and two count. James tried to curve him on the outside corner. And Pierce rifled a base hit to right center field, his second base hit of the ball game. Hit number 10 for the White Sox. Here's Louis Aparicio, struck out, bounced to short and walked. I know James tried to waste that pitch. Didn't want to get it over the plate, but he hit the outside corner and Pierce hit the pitch. Billy puts on the warm-up jacket again. Aparicio steps into the batter's box. The Yankees infield looking for the possible sacrifice. McDougal's in it there. Scarin ready to charge in. Here's the stretch to pitch. Curve hit in the ground. Off the pitcher's glove. And that's going to be a base hit. No chance to get Pierce or Aparicio. Louie beats out a base hit off the pitcher's glove. Hit number 12, 11 for the White Sox. Second off James, they had nine off Jim Coates. And here's Nellie Fox, who is single to left, single to right, and then struck out. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Now the uh, Yankee infield looking for the bunt. McDougal in at third, and Scourin in at first, and Fox is a good bunter. Here's the stretch. But he takes it on the inside corner, strike one. Ball game being sent overseas to the armed forces. Here's the stretch by James. Pitch bunted foul. Strike two. Nothing in two on Fox. Gordon Bridge from Armed Forces Radio was showing me a letter he had just received from a fan in northern Rhodesia, and that's one of those trouble spots where they're having all the refugees from the Congo coming in. A fellow watching a ball game, listening to a game with a rifle. There's a ground ball, a shot. Boyer to Richardson for one to throw to first. Safe at first. Richardson had to throw that ball with both feet in the air as he was playing Fox in the hole. Boyer's throw came to Bobby. Bobby caught it, stepped on second lead, high in the air, threw across his body, but not quite in time. So Aparicio is out. Pierce is at third. Fox is at first on the fourth play. And the batter is Minnie Minoso, who bounced to short, single to left, and hit back to the box. Minoso right behind Scarin at 325. Takes the curve low, ball one. One ball, no strike. Fox leads off first, Pierce off third. Pitch is swung and a missed strike one. High fastball, about letter high that many went after. One ball, one strike, one out. Curve high inside. Minoso falls flat on the ground. Two and one. Head rungy, dust off home plate. the stretch. The 2-1 pitch is fouled back on the screen. 2-2 two and, two. and again Minoso goes all the way down, down on both knees. Two balls, two strikes, one out. 6-2 the White Sox lead, top of the sixth inning. Billy Pierce talking with third base coach Tony Cuccinello. Don Gutteridge walks over to say something to Nelly Fox at first. Second base is open. Here's 
the stretch. Then James steps off the mound, goes back to the rosin bag. Now he's ready. Curve strike three, went after a bad pitch, didn't get it. Big strikeout for Johnny James. Here's Roy Severs, who uh, bounced the third, singled and homered. Two for three for Big Roy. Back over the 300 mark again. Started the game at 298. The stretch to pitch to Severs. A high pop-up. Boyer going back in short left field. He's under it. And has it for the third out. So for Chicago in the top of the sixth inning. No runs on two base hits. No Yankee errors. Two men left. The score at the end of five and a half innings. The White Sox six and the Yankees two. batting order to face Billy Pierce for the third time and it's the third time that Bobby Richardson has led off an inning in the ball game first inning the fourth inning and here in the sixth Bobby lined to center and flied out deep to left field WOKO Albany Billy Pierce had retired the first 12 men in order and in the fifth inning Scarlin got the first hit for the Yankees mantle double Howard single Popped up in the infield. Gene Freeze, the third baseman, is coming under it and makes the catch halfway between home and the pitcher's box. One away. Here's Hector Lopez. Fly to right and was called out on strikes. Lopez is swung at a mid strike one. Pierce pulled the string on him. Hector way out in front. Slow curve in the dirt, one and one. One pitch is popped foul back in the upper deck out of play. One ball, two strikes on Lopez. Here's the wind up by the left hand of the pitch. Is strike three, swings and misses a fastball. Strike out number seven for Pierce. Here's Roger Maris who bounced the second and struck out. There's a high fly to short right field. Fox is backing up, moving under it, and makes the catch back on the outfield grass for the third out. The Yankees go down one, two, three, nothing across in the bottom of the sixth and the score at the end of six full innings. Chicago six, the Yankees two. We pause for station identification. 
WOKO, Albany. Serving Albany's connect to the end, Troy, at 1460 on the radio dial. Seven minutes after four. On the scoreboard, Boston leads Cleveland 10 to 5 at the end of eight. Detroit has tied up Baltimore 1 1 playing the bottom of the seventh inning. Kansas City won the first game against Washington 6 3, and the A's failed to score in the top of the first of the second game. The National League, Philadelphia at Los Angeles, Pittsburgh at San Francisco start later on. Cardinals lead the Cubs 2 to 1 at the end of three and a half. And Milwaukee leads. Wait a minute, the Cardinals. They said let the Cubs, but they lead Cincinnati, and Milwaukee leads the Cubs 7 to 3 at the end of six and a half. And here at Yankee Stadium, the uh, White Sox are leading the Yankees 6-2. to two, Going into the top of the seventh inning and ready to go here in the top of the seventh inning will be Mel Allen. Mel Allen. Hello there, everybody. Sherman Lawler at bat in the seventh inning. Fly to left center, sacrificed and single to left. The White Sox leading six to two. Johnny James delivers, pitch is swung on and grounded foul down the third baseline, strike one. No balls, one strike. Johnny James into the windup and the pitch changeup is inside. Ball one, one and one. Took a little off the fastball. Smith and Freeze to follow. Johnny James, the third Yankee pitcher, into the windup. In comes the pitch and Lawler takes low outside for a ball. Breaking pitch. A 2 1 count. Eli Gerber and Herb Score will be the pitchers in the second game. delivers and Lawler takes high for ball three. Three and one. Three balls, one strike. Six to two, White Sox, seven inning. Now the pitch swung on and popped up into the air toward third. McDougal moving under it. Coming in and makes the catch. One down in the seventh. Now the batter is Al Smith, who flied to left, was purposely passed in the fourth inning, and flied to left in the fifth. Batting 323. Outfield straight away. James pitches curveball. It's in there. Strike one. balls, one strike. In comes the next pitch inside. Ball one, one and one. For you late tuners in, the White Sox did most of their damage in the fourth inning. Getting four runs in that inning and two in the fifth off Jim Coates. The one-one pitch, curveball lined over first into right field for a base hit. Maris goes over, up for the ball, and Smith holds on with a single to right. They've been on a hot streak in every department. Gene Freeze takes low for a ball. From last Sunday through uh, Thursday, the averages of the White Sox have uh, been uh, in the stratosphere. Now the pitch inside for a ball. From last Sunday through Thursday, Landis was hitting, uh, during that time, 350, Fox 412, Minosa 412, Sievers 353, Lawler 333, Smith 444, Freeze 294, and Aparicio 278. And they have continued to hit in this series. The next pitch is over the outside corner for a strike, two and one. Everything uh, has begun to gel 
And uh, that's the thing uh, in every department for the White Sox, just as it did for New York in the month of June. Two balls, one strike. Now the pitch. Swung on, grounded to McDougal. McDougal to Richardson for one, back on the first double play. Sides retired, no runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left on. The end of six and a half innings. The score remains Chicago six and New York two. The largest crowd of the season for the stadium, and uh, they get up for the seventh inning stretch. And why don't you uh, move into the kitchen and uh, stretch your arm into the refrigerator for a bottle of Ballantine. Ballantine gives you both lightness and flavor, the two things a beer must have to refresh. It's the light beer with true lager flavor. That's what makes it the crisp refresher. Treat your thirst to the crisp refresher. Make the famous three ring sign and ask the man for a tall frosty glass of Ballantine beer. In the last half of the seventh inning, Scourin, Mantle, and Howard will be coming up. The Cleveland Indians will be in here Tuesday night. Doubleheader Wednesday afternoon and a makeup night game Thursday night. Next Friday night, Kansas City. Saturday afternoon, the A's, a doubleheader next Sunday. Then the Tigers will be here for four games in three days. Including three night games, August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. The night game of the 2nd is an added uh, date on your schedule to make up for an earlier night game rained out with Detroit. There'll be a day game on August the 2nd and a night game. Bill Scowron got the first hit off Pierce in the 5th inning. Hitting 331. 6-2, Chicago. Billy Pierce into the windup. A pitch is in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Now the delivery. In there, strike two. Nothing in two. Pierce was almost taken out of the game last inning when Serve started to go up to bat. Lopez started out and stopped when Serve had not been announced and went back, and then DeMacy was sent up instead. Pierce stayed in. Next pitch is inside for a ball, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Now the pitch. Moose swings and fouls it off to the right of the plate out of play. Lopez is moving uh, center fielder Joe Hicks a little more to right center. Scarron to the winder, I mean uh, Pierce and Scarron hits the ball into the air to right field. Smith is under it and makes the catch. One away. Mickey Mantle struck out and lined a double to left to set up the two runs that were driven in by Howard. Six to two, Chicago. into the wind up and the pitch low ball one now the one nothing delivery swung on line to short off the glove of that reach it throws the first high mantle feet a hard shot hit at the feet of Aparicio Spun off his glove into the air and Mantle is credited with a base hit. Up comes Elston Howard. Howard.
Ward uh, struck out and singled the center to drive in Scarron and Mantle. Swung on and fouled off upstairs. Strike one. Lawler goes out to talk to Pierce. Here's the pitch. Swung on, lined in the center, right at Hicks. He takes it, and Mantle retreats to first. Howard lines out to center. Two away. Yankees actually have only had five base runners in the game. Gil McDougal flied to center and grounded to short into a double play in the fifth inning. Pearson uh, started the stretch and McDougal asked for time. Billy sets, delivers, high curve, ball one. Swung on, hit foul down the right field line, out of play. A 1-1 one -one count. Now the next pitch. Low, ball two, two and one. Six to two, Chicago, seventh inning. The White Sox are off on the uh, greatest uh, streak of the season. Surpassing that of the Yankees in June. Here's the pitch. Swung on and popped up into short left. Aparicio out. Minosa in and Minnie makes the catch. Sides retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. At the end of seven innings, Chicago six runs, 12 hits, no errors, seven left on. The Yankees two runs, five hits, one error, and two men left on. You're in the mood for some refreshment. Remember, light, delicious Valentine beer. A tall, cold glass bowl would go pretty good right now, wouldn't it? Uh, Casey Stengel will be uh, 70. And I know a lot of you folks might like to be on hand to help salute Casey. Folks like to ride him and get on him, but he's still one of the most colorful managers of all time. 70 years old next Saturday. Hope you can come out. In the eighth inning, Joe Hicks first up for Chicago. Pierce to follow, then Aparicio. The White Sox have won 21 out of 29. That was the Yankee uh, record in June, I believe, approximately that. Johnny James' pitch is swung on, bounced to second. Richardson has it, throws to Scourin, and Hicks is retired. Billy 
Billy Pierce hasn't come out yet. And uh, here he comes now. Pierce fly to left and single to center twice. He drove in two runs. Uh, the Yankees uh, won 21 and lost eight in June. And the White Sox have won 21 and lost eight. And lead in this game, six to two. James's pitch is over. Strike one. Now the delivery. Outside. Ball one. One and one. One pitch swung on, fouled off third out of play in the upper deck. A one-two count. Two of the games, the White Sox, uh, one game that they won, and this one they lead in, turned. Oh, you can always take out turning points, but on the pitcher getting a base hit with a uh, chance to get out of an inning. Early win got a base hit in the clutch the other night. Fastball swung on and missed strike three. Johnny James has been uh, the most effective uh, Yankee pitcher we've seen in a few days. He gave up uh, two hits in the sixth. One uh, ball that bounced off his glove that should have been a double play ball. And one base hit in the seventh. Here's Aparicio. Took a third strike, grounded a short walk, and had the hit off James' glove. Johnny to the windup and the pitch in there for a strike. Nothing in one. Here's the next pitch. It's over. Strike two. Nothing in two. strike delivery. High fastball that counts one and two. Now the next pitch. Curveball swung on and missed. Strike three. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. And Johnny James In his three innings of work, he's given up three hits and no runs. At the end of seven and a half innings, White Sox six and the Yankees two. In the last of the eighth, Boyer, James, and Richardson are the scheduled batters. We're going to have some, uh, I believe, some changes for the White Sox. Esposito is going to go to third. And Landis is going into center. And you go into the kitchen and refresh yourself with some Ballantine beer. To really refresh, a beer must have lightness plus flavor. Ballantine proves to more people every day that a beer can be light and still give you all the lager beer flavor you want. Ballantine is the light beer with true lager flavor. This delicious light lager flavor is what makes Ballantine beer the crisp refresher. So if you drink beer for taste and refreshment, then Ballantine is the beer for you. See for yourself why Ballantine is the most popular beer from Maine to Florida, the largest selling beer in the East. In the last half of the eighth inning, Cleet Boyer will be first up, and Bob Serve will hit for James. Six to two in favor of the White Sox. Pierce all set. 
Moyer struck out, double to left. The left hand with the wind up, and the pitch is high, ball one. The next delivery is in there, strike one, one and one. Now the wind up and the pitch to Boyer is outside. Ball two, two and one. The two one delivery. Swung on and hit foul coming back out of play in the upper deck. Esposito well, bat in Priest place and Landis in Hicks position. Seventh and eighth in the order. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on foul, tip drop. Count remains 2-2. Two -two. White Sox won their first four meetings for the Yankees this year. Then the Yankees won the next seven. And the White Sox have won the last two and lead in this one six to two. The 2 2 delivery. Swung on, say high drive to right center. Al Smith goes over, gets under it, and makes the catch. One away. Now Bob Serb comes up to hit for Johnny James. batting 237. Bailey Pierce to the windup and the pitch is over the outside corner for a strike. Lopez moved Dal Smith a little more toward right knowing they would uh, pitch away from Bob. Here's the delivery. Swung on and hit down the right field line, but foul and out of play. Strike two, nothing in two. The two-strike pitch. He held off. Ball got away from uh, Lawler. A one-two count. on and bounce to third. Esposito has it. The throw to first is not in time and the ball additionally was dropped by Sievers. Esposito had to back up on the ball. We'll await the official scorer's ruling. It's an error. Charge to Esposito on the throw. Bobby Richardson steps up. He lined the center, fly to left, and popped the third. White Sox six, Yankees two. It's the last half of the eighth inning. One on, one out. Pierce ready, delivers. Swung on, fouled down the first baseline. Strike one. And the pitch swung on a down ball through to left field for a base hit. Serve stops at second. Richardson singles to left. 
And the batter now is Hector Lopez. Fly to right and twice to struck out. But that's going to be all for Billy Pierce. Al Lopez making a fast move as he always does. For Billy Pierce in seven and one third innings has allowed six hits. Four in the fifth and one in the seventh and one here in the eighth. He gets a hand, Pierce does, as he leaves. didn't walk a man in for the second straight time while he went the distance last time against Boston and shut him out. He didn't walk anybody. He didn't walk anybody here in seven and third innings. And in a total now of 23 and a third innings, he's walked one man. In 32 and a third innings, he's walked three men. In 39 and a third innings, he's walked five men. In 48 and a third innings, he's walked nine men. Dirk Clown is coming in. Dirk Clown coming on in the eighth inning with one out. And while he's walking in, we'll pause for station identification. WOKO Albany, serving Albany, Schenectady at Troy, 1460 on the radio dial. 26 and one half minutes before five. who uh, relieved Bowman uh, yesterday you know it was the uh, uh, let's see how that was Friday night Staley uh, worked yesterday Lowne coming in for the 29th time this year has a record of one and one group of the petty officers of the naval base from New London today in the Norwich Lodge of Elks are also here and large group from the New Haven Civic Association. White Sox leading 6-2. to two. It's the last of the eighth. Hector Lopez steps up, nothing for three. Roger Maris on deck. Lown gets the sound, sound, gets the sign from Lawler into the stretch and the pitch outside, ball one. Serve on second. And Richardson on first. One down. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. One and one. One and one the count on... Hector Lopez. Six to two, Chicago, eighth inning. Serve and Richardson lead away. The pitch swung on, a ground ball to Aparicio. Steps on second, throws to first, double play. Side retire. No runs. One hit, one error, and one left on. At the end of eight innings, Chicago six runs, 12 hits, one error. The Yankees two runs, six hits, 
one error. Elsewhere in the American League, and by the way, that was the 100th double play for the White Sox this year. And both of them uh, today came in the clutch. McDougal in the fifth after two runs were in and one on nobody out. And if you don't think that was a clutch double play with Maris coming up and Scott and Mantle, if, you know, if anything had happened. So they came up with it. That's what Lyon came in for and he got Lopez sitting into the DP. Boston beat Cleveland 10 to 6. Mombouquet beat Bell. Francona homered and Geiger homered. Geiger the one on. Second game, Harshman and Sullivan. Detroit and Baltimore, one and one at the end of eight innings. Estrada for Baltimore. Sisler relieved Bunning in the seventh for Detroit. Kansas City beat Washington 6 to 3. Herbert beat Clevenger. And in the second game, Washington leads 4 to nothing out of two innings. Pasquale for the Senators. Garber started for the A's. Davis relieved in the second. In the National League, Rain has uh, slowed up the Cardinal red leg game. It's 2-1. to one. Cardinals attend to three and a half innings. Bolio and Hook. Spencer and Cunningham homering for the Cardinals. Coleman for Cincinnati. At San Francisco, Cheney and Odell will be the pitchers in the Pirate-Giant game. Philadelphia at Los Angeles, no report yet. Milwaukee 7, Chicago 5. They're playing the last half of the ninth inning in the first game of the doubleheader. Spawn for the Braves, Hobby for Chicago. Moorhead, Shafanoff, and Freeman in relief. Logan with one on and Adcock homering for the Braves. Santos with one on and Thomas with one on for the Cubs. Now to the ninth inning of the first game of the doubleheader. 6-2 to two, Chicago. Fox, Minosa, and Seavers coming up. Ralph Terry coming in to pitch. Terry, with a record of four and five, worked uh, an inning in two-thirds yesterday. Johnny James, in his two innings, gave up three hits, no runs. In his uh, three innings. The pitch to Fox, swung on, looped into left. Lopez getting under it and makes the catch. One down. Fox had single to left, single to right, struck out, and grounded to short previously. Minnie Minoso grounded to short, single to left, out on a bunt, and struck out. Batting 324. Jerry to the wind up and the pitch. Inside, ball one. Now the one nothing delivery. It's a ball. Two balls, no strikes. The two nothing pitch. Curve ball over, strike one, two and one. one delivery. Swung on, lined into left, coming on fast as Lopez and makes the catch. Many lines out to left. Now Roy Severs, who grounded the third, single to left, hit a tremendous homer to left, over toward the visiting bullpen, and popped to short. Two runs batted in. Freeze drove in two, and Billy Pierce drove in two. Seaver's hot bat ignited the Sox surge. Strike fastball in there, nothing in one. Jerry's next pitch, swung on, fouled off upstairs. Strike two, nothing in two. No 
balls, two strikes. Terry in with the wind up and the pitch is high, ball one, one and two. The one two delivery and Sievers grounds it to the box. Grabbed by Terry, the throw to Scarron and the sides retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of eight and a half innings, Chicago six, New York two. On the lighter side of sports, here are a couple of tales on boxing that we hope you might like. It actually happened when a salesman was asked for a book on the art of self-defense. He brought out a book by James J. Corbett. The salesman said Corbett knocked out John L. Sullivan, and he didn't lose the fight until he was knocked out by Bob Fitzsimmons. You like it? The customer said, it's fine, but have you got a book by Bob Fitzsimmons? Well, I didn't make these up. They are written for us, and uh, I am contractually required to read them. <laughs> it's all right, though, isn't it? It reminds me of the time someone asked a recent heavyweight boxer whom he thought would ever beat him. The fellow who can outbox and outhit me was the reply. Well, well, you do when he comes along. Sign him up, said the champ, and manage him. And why isn't it time you signed up for Valentine? Think that one. Is. It's the light beer with true lager flavor. So treat yourself to the crisp professor. Cool, frosty, cool Valentine beer. The last half of the ninth inning. Maris, Scarron, and Mantle coming up. White Sox leading 6-2. to two. Maris grounded the second, struck out, and popped out the second. Turk Clown in relief of Billy Pierce to the windup. The pitch over the inside corner, strike one. Swung on line to left center for a base hit. Maris turns first and holds up, and they're throwing behind him, but he gets back to first. But also threw on to first base when he thought he'd catch Maris traveling around too far. Bill Skyron comes up. He fly to right center, single to center, and fly to right. Seventh hit for New York. Lound to the stretch. Pitch to Scowen. High and inside, ball one. Right hander into the stretch. Here's the pitch. It's inside, ball two. Two and nothing. And Maris. The 2 nothing delivery. Swung on and fouled back up there on the netting. Strike one. Two and one. Two balls. One strike. Lound to the stretch. And the pitch. High and inside, ball three, three and one. Three balls, one strike. Turk Clown ready. And the delivery. It's in there, strike two. Moose jumped away from the plate. Took one right down the middle. Looks as if he had something in his eye and was trying to ask for time, but it was too late. 
full count now. Brown into the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on, hit foul, out of play beyond first base. Up onto the roof. Full count on Scarron. Hitting 331. Here's the pitch. Swung on, ground ball to right field for a base hit. Maris turns second, heads for third. Runners on first and third, and up comes Mantle. And Al Lopez is coming out of the dugout. come in to pitch to Mantle. Make him turn around, hit right-handed. Kirk Lown pitched to three batters, but he did a job in the eighth inning. With two on and one out, he got Lopez to hit in a double play to end the inning with a uh, heart of the order coming up. And now with two men on, Lopez is forcing Mantle to turn around by bringing in a left-hander because it's more difficult to hit the long one in this park right-handed than left-handed. Frank Bauman's coming in. Of course, a home run at this juncture could still leave by the Yankees one shy. But naturally would uh, add the pressure. Frank Bauman coming in. Lown worked two thirds of an inning. Gave up two hits. Didn't walk anybody. No strikeouts. Frank Bauman who uh, worked four and two-thirds innings against the Yankees on Friday night. Allowed three hits and one run. He'll be making his 26th appearance, a record of seven and four. He's got good stuff, too. Good fastball, good curve and slider. Tony Kubek is going to go in and run for Scowron. Kubek running for Scowron. warming up. Bauman uh, can throw a good sinker too. That's what uh, Lopez wants. He wants the ground ball to beat the threat of any big inning. Mantles had two for three, struck out, doubled and singled. to two Chicago, ninth inning. Maris on third, Kubek on first, running for Skyron. The pitch to Mantle. Swung on to high drive in the right center. And there 
there goes uh, Smith over, and the ball is caught at the auxiliary scoreboard. Maris tags up and comes in to score after the catch. Kubek had to hold it first. Al Smith caught the ball up against the right center field fence at the auxiliary scoreboard. And so it's just a long out and a run batted in for Mantle. Long sacrifice fly. A couple more feet and this would have been interesting. It's six to three now, one out. And Elston Howard coming up. <laughs> Mantle's 56th run batted in. Elston Howard up. And the pitch. Swung on, bounced to third, throw to second for the force on Kubek. Esposito to Fox, and they're two down. Here's Gil McDougal, fly to center, grounded to short into a double play, and fly to left. Two down now in the ninth, six to three in favor of the White Sox. struck out, single to center, and line to center previously. McDougal, nothing for three. Frank Bauman's pitch in there, strike one. Six to three White Sox, two out on the lane. Here's the pitch. Gill swings and bounces it to short. Aparicio, the Fox, and the ball game is over. And the White Sox win their third straight game from New York and eight in a row and 22 out of their last 30 and are two games ahead in first place. One run, two hits, no errors, and one left on. The totals, the White Sox, six runs, 12 hits, one error. The Yankees, three runs, eight hits, and one error. Billy Pierce wins his ninth game. He's lost five, one and one against New York on the season 24 and 34 lifetime it was his 174th major league win he's lost 141 the losing pitcher Jim Coates a record of 9 and 2 June 1 on the season against Chicago and 3 and 1 lifetime is 15 and 3 overall in his brief major league career well that wraps up the first game of the doubleheader well, the White Sox winning at 6-3, to three, but don't go away because we'll be back in approximately 20 minutes with the second game. Herb Score is scheduled to go for the White Sox and Eli Gerber for the Yankees, who are now trying to uh, smash at least the final game of this series. The White Sox have guaranteed they're holding on to first place regardless of what the Yankees do in the second game. The White Sox have won their eighth straight ball game, so hang around here now. We'll uh, be seeing you in about 20 minutes. 